grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not quite sure where the phrase originates, who's your daddy? But sometimes when students in my class are being a little obnoxious, I will say to them, you know, if your parents ever disown you and kick you out of the house, you let me know. I will adopt you and bring you into my home. If for no other reason that I can look at you and ask, who's your daddy? For some reason, I think that's a very funny joke. I'm not sure why. But it is our theme for this morning. Who is your dad? There are three things that happen to us simultaneously when we get saved. There is justification. The divine exchange whereby our sinful nature is taken away from us and placed upon Jesus. And his righteousness is placed upon us. There's regeneration, where God makes us into new creatures. And then finally there's adoption. Something that is appropriate for us to consider on a Sunday when we are acknowledging Father's Day. Now there's a couple of points I want to make, and just a couple. Because one of the things they taught me at the seminary was that you don't preach long sermons if there's food after the service. So we'll keep it brief this morning. But the first point I want to make is that we as sinners are slaves to sin and fear. And so Paul reassures us in our lesson for today when he says, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. There are many things that cause us to be slaves to fear, and often it's the unknown. When our imagination takes over and turns shadows in the bedroom into monsters, and uncertainty into disaster. In fact, I'm told that when Tommy was small, his mom sent him into the cupboard you get a can of tomato soup. And so Tommy went to the cupboard, but the light was burned out. It was dark in there. He wasn't going to go into the cupboard because there was monsters there. So he went back to his mom and said, I couldn't get it. It's dark in there. And I was all alone. And Lori said to him, Tommy, don't worry about it. Jesus will go there with you. And so Tommy went back to the closet looked in, it was still dark, and so he called out, Jesus, if you're there, hand me the can of tomato soup, please. It's okay to be scared. Sometimes being scared keeps us from danger. But when fear paralyzes us, then we have become a slave to fear. And as we read the book of Romans, we see that Paul is telling us that our status as God's adopted children is what frees us from the slavery of fear. We don't accept God through our own efforts. It's the Holy Spirit that God has promised to us and gave to the church on Pentecost Sunday that enables us to say, Jesus is Lord, and to accept the gift salvation. In chapter 8 of Paul's letter to the Romans, we have our text for this morning. And Paul writes, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified in him. And Paul sets us up for that, that text by beginning that eighth chapter of his letter 
by talking about how we are slaves to sin and how we are trapped in our sinfulness. That there is nothing we can do to earn God's pleasure. Paul describes himself as a wretched man because the good he wants to do and knows that God wants him to do, he doesn't do. And the evil things that God wants him to avoid doesn't it figure that's what he does. Now I'll bet you I'm not the only person in the room who has ever felt that way. Where we have struggled with one particular sin or another. Where we have attempted to please God only to realize that we have come up short. So Paul writes, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And so we talk about adoption. Now for Paul, in his time frame, Adoption, as it is today, is a legal decision. In Paul's time, if you were to be adopted by another family, you would first renounce all ties to your birth family. You would no longer have any contact with them, no longer any connection with them. Rather, instead, you now become part of your new family. And so it is when folks have challenged churches like the Lutherans why we baptize children. That's the explanation we offer. That in adoption, the infant is not aware that he or she is now a part of a new family. Nevertheless, through the authority of the judge, that relationship is now official and legal. And the child grows up with a new family new parents, new brothers and sisters if be, and a new inheritance. And so it is that we, who are God's children, are adopted by God through the power of the Holy Spirit. We may not recognize it at the time in infancy, but that does not invalidate what God has done for us. Now we also practice the baptism of adults, Yet it's the same Holy Spirit that's active in either scenario. The Bible says that no one can claim that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So those who say you must first accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and then be baptized are talking as if accepting Jesus was their own personal accomplishment. But in reality, it's nothing more than being led by God's Spirit. And so it is, as we gather this morning, we are all God's children because we have all been adopted by Him. And that makes you my brothers and sisters. You know, you can pick your friends, you're stuck with your family. It's all right, you're stuck with me too. But then that makes Jesus my brother. That makes Jesus your brother. And we heard in the gospel lesson this morning Jesus saying, if you want to see what the Father is like, look at me. For the Father and I are one. So in claiming Jesus as our brother, we are claiming God as our Father. Now there are only four verses in the Bible where the word Abba is used. And it's translated for us as Dad. In Galatians 4, verse 6, Because you are sons and daughters, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. And then today, you have received the Spirit of adoption, and so you cry out, Daddy, Father. You know, the term Abba, the term of endearment for us it might be comparable to our word daddy, which is also 
a word of endearment. It's got a ring of familiarity to it. Children, when they're young, might call their father daddy. When they get older, they may opt for something more grown up, dad or father. But daddy is fun. Daddy loves me. If I'm hurting, crying, I go to daddy and he will kiss my boo. -boo. Daddy cares. I can come to daddy whenever I want. And if I have a problem, I can go to daddy and he will help me. That's the kind of relationship that we have with God. He's our daddy. He loves us. He cares for us. Gives us hugs when we need them. And is there for us when we have troubles. As children run to their earthly fathers, so we can run to our heavenly father. Now, when children are growing up, People sometimes say the silliest things. He looks just like his father. Or she's the spitting image of her mother. I, I gotta wonder about that one. A spitting image. What in the world are you trying to say? The connotation there boggles my mind. But I get the idea. It's a similarity in appearance. And once there was a boy named Dominic. He had a rough childhood. His parents were drunk. And the only time they weren't fighting was when they had passed out. And the police were called to their home to resolve domestic disturbances on a regular basis. Dad had been in and out of prison. And mom was recently in jail for driving under the influence. So the authorities finally stepped in and removed eight-year-old Dominic from that home and placed him with a loving foster family. The Walkers were wonderful people and they welcomed Dominic into their home and had a room with a warm bed all prepared for him. And that following Sunday, they got Dominic all dressed up and as was their custom, they went to church taking Dominic with them. Dominic didn't want to go because he knew that everybody would be looking at him, everybody would know who he was, everybody would know the story of his family, and he did not want to be so public about his life. But nevertheless, when you're eight, you don't get a whole lot of choice in certain matters. And so he walked into church with the walkers, at which point the pastor greeted them in this middle aisle. And the parents said to him, Pastor, we want you to meet our foster child, Dominic. And the pastor looked at Dominic and said, I know you, because I know your father. The, the, the look likeness is incredible. And what Dominic wanted to do at that moment was just shrink into the carpet and disappear. And the pastor went on to say, yep, no doubt about it. You are the spitting image of your heavenly father. And I guess that kind of makes you my brother. Because he's my daddy too. Sure enough. When a child is adopted, it's not a matter of genetics. It's a matter of love. And we become adopted into God's family. And God becomes our daddy. And people should be able to see the family resemblance. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, for well, the Father and I are one. Can we make the same claim that when people see us, they see the Father? Happy Father's Day to everyone. Enjoy your status as adopted children. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now before we offer our gifts to the Lord, Nancy's going to offer hers.